I'll start off um, with introductions. I'm Rebecca Allen. I'm the Education and Workforce Lead for Amazon Web Services. Um, and what we focus on is helping work with states to develop long-term sustainable pipelines of cloud and IT skilled talent, and then connecting them with local hiring companies who are struggling to find folks to kind of match the open job recs that they have. And I'm joined by Stephen Ferguson, who's the CIO and Interim Deputy Commissioner for Economic Development for the Technical College System of Georgia. So in that role, he leads a team that is responsible for over 320,000 students who are focused on technical education, adult education, um, and he also leads the economic development and workforce divisions across over 80 campuses of Georgia. Georgia's 22 technical colleges. Um, so just real quick background, this conversation really comes from the idea that some of the um, shifts that we've been talking about or that have been discussed um, in the kind of opening sessions have economic shifts, economic development, cloud migration as one of the accelerants to that have really created a groundswell demand for a new type of talent pipeline. Um, we have a lot of data that can give you more specifics around that. I'll just leave you with a high level stat, which is that over 90% of IT decision makers say that they have shortages when it comes to finding people who have the technical skills that they're looking for. Um, we hear this every day, companies who are unable to take on new projects, unable to grow because they just don't have the staff to support it. So Stephen, let's talk about the role of technical and community colleges and why they're so critical, um, and specifically TCSG's role in particular when it comes to industry and education alignment. Um, so can you talk a little bit about how you decided to steer TCSG into getting involved with cloud and with AWS? Oh, absolutely. So thank you for having us today and thanks for uh, uh, leading the chat here, Rebecca. Um, TCSG, our, our mission is workforce development. Uh, we strive to stay uh, ahead of trends, uh, ideally, uh, but if you can't be first, you at least got to go at the same time as they're happening. Uh, cloud's one of those everyone's been talking about for a decade. It, it's coming. You know, the workforce needs are coming. Uh, people need to learn these skills or they're not going to be able to get jobs. Um, we've got to migrate to the cloud um, or we won't be able to sustain and we won't be able to operate our business. Uh, immediately prior to the pandemic, uh, the state uh, had recognized um, that while cloud was already established in a lot of business and industry and, and was really commonplace uh, for a lot of the uh, uh, industries we were serving, it did not have the same position in state government, uh, certainly not in education, uh, but across the board, we had a lot of work to do. Um, if we were going to keep up uh, with, a, with a rapid pace of change, uh, I had met with the governor's chief technology advisor um, at that time. And uh, one of the first uh, ideas he had was, or, or questions he had is, how do we get more cloud muscle in state government? And so as the workforce development agency, uh, it's like, well, let's work together and, and let's make that happen. And, and so that's really how we got started and again, that was immediately pre-pandemic. Uh, so, so for government, uh, that that's pretty fast, and, and probably ten years ahead of time for for what we would typically think about in state government. But uh, that was immediately pre-pandemic. Uh, we would already started putting together a plan of okay, we're going to start training individuals. You know, the workforce needs uh, these folks. We're already turning out lots of technologists, um, and, and they have closure cloud, but they're not very cloud centric yet. So we're going to start bringing out a workforce that's cloud ready. Uh, we're going to try to intern and, and bring these folks into state government because you know government also has the challenge of just recruitment and, uh, and retention uh, of that talent and then uh, we'll scale this out to a whole bunch of agencies and, and this is how we're going to build our muscle a pandemic hit and uh, everyone immediately figures out that not only uh, do you have to have cloud to survive long term you're going to move to cloud services to survive the next year and a half uh, some of that is a, a looking back um, and that really accelerated uh, our transformation, but, but also our workforce uh, readiness, uh, participation and, and, and programs and partnerships uh, like the wonderful we have with Amazon and AWS today. 
Awesome. That is so helpful. And it feels like your alignment to the state um, and both on the kind of government side, but also on the industry side, kind of being able to tap into what the needs are and where the trends are going really helped. Um, can you talk a little bit about the specifics of the program um, that you ended up creating and kind of the role of employers in it as well? Yeah. So, so phase one was let's figure out something. Am I still there? Something hide. Phase one was let's figure out how we launch a program. Uh, so we had already had some uh, moderate outreach with Amazon. We we're already working with uh, Microsoft and, and other and other uh, providers out there. And uh, we started asking, you know, what what was available, what content's available. Uh, both both providers in Amazon uh, in particular reached out very quickly and said, hey, not only do we have these these canned uh, curriculum. Uh, offerings. We have offerings uh, that will allow you to just ingest some of our content and, and make it yours, put it into your program. Uh, so we, we really got our, our instructors together. We got our curriculum developers together, sat down and, and wanted to see how can we launch this rapidly um, and how can we scale it uh, uh, even, even more rapidly, uh, seeing as you know we were already in, in the middle of, of what became a, a global pandemic. Um, or, or we're in the beginning of what became a global pandemic, but we need to do this now. So we, we got all the folks together. We sat in a room uh, for a couple of days, something you could have done a few months later, <laughs> uh, kind of hashed out, here's all the content, here's the training. You know, what do you, what do you want? And, uh, and, and how can we do this? Uh, ultimately decided that uh, we, in order to move quickly, we need to start a non-credit offering. Uh, something that didn't have to go through all the approval chains or anything of, of accreditation. We need to move now and we need to do this um, on a scale that lets people you know, sign up next week, uh, somewhat on demand. Uh, so we launched a non-credit offering uh, with one institution uh, that quickly scaled to, hey, let's, let's share this talent. We've already got one instructor, let's, let's share it. Uh, and so we decided to share uh, that course uh, amongst multiple institutions, amongst multiple colleges uh, to not only increase the, the output uh, but increase that interest, right? So, so look for those that are interested in, in, in recruit more, make maximum use of that instructor's time. Uh, what that led to uh, was really the snowball effect, uh, particularly in, in uh, the AWS courses, but also the Microsoft stuff we were potting as well. It, it led us to launch what ultimately became our eCampus platform, which was a shared services model uh, for instruction uh, to where we could take and leverage that talent that already had some, some uh, in, you know, classes under their belt uh, start teaching to a broader range uh, to where today we've got, you know, in, in less than a in less than a year since we launched the first classes, we have over uh, 200 uh, individuals enrolled and, and a little over 100 that have already graduated with a credential. Um, that, that's kind of how we got started. Uh, the program itself started with that one class. Uh, we reached out to Amazon. Uh, we were able to pick up, uh, I think, immediately three additional classes. Uh, we've now added a fifth course. Uh, we've put together a whole uh, credit certificate uh, that can be added on to any of our IT programs, uh, programming, networking, and all those, so we can get uh, uh, different modalities of, of student that are cloud ready, um, are ready to focus on uh, a career in cloud, or uh, to be hired into an organization that's just looking to get their feet wet in cloud. Uh, so we're trying to meet the, uh, meet the needs of employers at, at where they are at whatever level they're at in, in their cloud journey. Uh, but the most exciting thing is because of success and the rapid scalability of that, we've started picking up employers who want first dips. Uh, they want to take internship opportunities with these, with these individuals uh, because the, the, the global you know, battle for talent is heating up. Uh, they would like to go ahead and start recruiting uh, the best and their brightest to their teams, expose them early, get them the necessary experience uh, so they start having a, a payback or a turn on the investment. They're going to make that individual uh, much faster. Uh, what that's creating is students who are are better prepared for the workforce, uh, but also students who have options. Uh, so when they get that real world experience under their belt. Uh, they're going to be able to pick not only you know they're they're getting picked for the best and brightest. They're going to be able to pick the organizations they want to work for, and uh, and that's super exciting. So to give students not only a good career, but to give them options in, in how they achieve that career. So 
Yeah, it's been amazing to see just kind of being out on the front lines with you all at TCSG, um, how employers are saying, hey, we are no longer going to be passive recipients of the talent that you produce. We're going to get kind of roll up our sleeves and do this with you so that, you know, we can um, give you input into what capstone projects are so that we're ensuring that when students go through these capstones, they're, they kind of know what it's like to work here at you know X company. Um, they have the skills and they're developing the technical skills, but they're also developing the soft skills, which is you know one of the things that we keep hearing um, everyone talk about. And that's all about what makes someone employable, right? Can they work in groups? Can they talk about the the technical skills that um, they've actually, you know, what is it that they've developed? How Why did they make the decisions they did? Can they work you know collaboratively in teams. Um, so you know, you're giving students a chance for to develop all of that and to present it um, to employers in alignment with what those employers actually need. Um, so really kind of, I would say, blazing the way um, with that. And you know, your, your point there, Stephen, also um, creating these opportunities is a really good segue to talk about the theme for this entire conference um, you know, on, on DEI. So let's dig in and talk about um, diversity a little bit too. Um, this whole initiative and partnership is a, as much about um, equity as it is about economic development and driving innovation. Um, so I'm going to share a little bit of data with you. And this comes from the, the U.S. Census Bureau. So for everyone out there who wants to fact check it, uh, about 68% of the American public lacks a bachelor's degree. But if you look at that just for Black Americans, that increases to 78%. And if you look at Hispanic Americans, it increases further to 85%. So think about that in the context of today's kind of economic climate and work climate. Um, you know, for companies who are looking to hire and requiring bachelor's degrees, it's shutting out opportunities for people who could be incredibly well matched from a skills perspective. It's limiting companies' access to you know, diverse talent, just looking at the numbers. And this is at a time when companies are more and more realizing the strength of diversity in the workforce. Uh, but a lot of times, you know, when we're out talking to companies, they don't know where to look and they don't know how to actually go about building a diverse candidate uh, and employee kind of pipeline. So Stephen, would love to hear you talk about the role of TCSG in driving diversity in IT and in cloud. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I want to chop that into two uh, a, a two part answer. Uh, the first is uh, talking about these bachelor's degrees. Uh, we're very quickly uh, becoming a a skill based employment society, um, and so in order for just like higher ed's had to change and shift its models, and we're now doing a lot more of the shared services for instructional models, uh, which is really not how it's been done traditionally. Uh, employers have to do some shifting here too, which is they've got to think about what is actually required for the job. We're still relying on you know, job descriptions that have been written 20 years ago. Um, it, and even if you can change the job description, I would say 99% of the time, I know the state government, you can't change the minimum qualifications. If you want this role, it requires a bachelor's degree. Why? Do, do I need that? No. And I think some of the really forward-thinking employers uh, have already long ago you know, gone that way, but a lot of them now are, that's why they want to do these early internships. They want early access to talent. And, uh, and the talent isn't necessarily all coming out of a four-year institution or a grad school. The talent's coming out of technical college, coming out of community college, it's coming out uh, of CTAE programs. Uh, and if you really want to win the global war for talent, you're going to have to get students earlier and earlier and earlier. You can't wait until they've gone through a four-year program. There's still a lot of value. A lot of us on the call today uh, went through you know, a university system, I, I, I actually did get an associate's degree, got a, a bachelor's degree, got a master's degree. Uh, I think those are spread out over 20 different years, though. Uh, and I think tomorrow's students going to be very uh, similar. They may come to us and get a micro credential that stacks to a certificate that then stacks to a associate degree that later transfers and gets them a bachelor's degree when they need it. Um, so education is becoming just in time. And if you talk about diversity, equity, inclusion, you're 100% on board. Those that are in economically disadvantaged areas are, are much less likely uh, to have access to the education they need to, to either skill up or, or to get an opportunity um, at a traditional employer. Um, not surprising, those that are in those economically disadvantaged areas are often people of color. Uh, the same thing as the, the metrics you're seeing here. Uh, one thing TCSG does really well and, uh, and we're very proud of is we do have a very diverse uh, student population, not only from a, from a race um, we have a very uh, gender diverse situation. We have a very geographically diverse situation. Our, our, our population 
we also have you know neurotypical neuroatypical students as you know as part of our population so we do cover the diversity uh pretty well the populations but because of where you live oftentimes programs were just not available so we're within 30 miles of everybody in the state and uh being that close to everyone means that we can get education out there but you can't always find the talent where you need it and so just like with the aws programs or just like with the microsoft cloud programs or just like with with google or or apple or any of these really high demand high skilled jobs that that pay well um you, you got to find an instructor and and as good of a job as we do the instructors make the college right you know administration we can put a lot of great things out there but you need quality instructors and that's really what led us to eCampus because we wanted to create an environment create a platform where students had access to educational opportunities especially in these high demand areas regardless of their zip code um you know they may not be geographically mobile they don't have the the economic uh, situation uh, to go to a, a larger university in pursuit of the degree they ultimately want but if we can get them in the door now get them the skills get a certificate get them the just-in-time education that gets them employed gets them the internship lands them opportunity to not only work and grow they can continue their education as they need to or choose to but we really want to give them those choices uh, because a lot of folks are seeing that hey with six eight weeks uh, of training i can get a job i can stay in school i can get my associate degree i can work my way up the ladder uh, and i can do that from where i am today i can do that in small town georgia in hyper rural you know wherever and take advantage of this opportunity so we're really proud of that we're excited about it uh, two-thirds of our students are, are female um, a plurality are, are females of color um, and again, uh, they're economically uh, diverse. About 40% of students, you know, come from economically disadvantaged uh, households, um, you know, across the state. And we are more than 30 miles of everybody in the state of Georgia. So it's been an amazing opportunity for, you know, a partnership between AWS and TCSG in that, you know, AWS has significant footprint across the state. So we have a lot of customers who need this type of talent. So as we sort of embed our curriculum and certifications into, uh, you know, this program of study, which is able to reach students across the state in areas that have been underserved, we're able to develop this pipeline of talent that then can serve, you know, customers who wouldn't otherwise you know, have access to folks who have these skill sets. So it's, you know, a win for really all of the different um, parties involved. And I would say together, we've been out kind of evangelizing this approach to skills-based hiring. Um, and, you know, we've seen attitudes shifting from hiring companies side as well, saying, just given how tight the labor market is, it's sort of kind of forced the issue a little bit. Um, and people have been more open to, you um, it, it, to kind of saying, hey, show us what these people can do. Um, and, you know, we're going to back off of this four year degree requirement. And so that's what we've been doing together. And eCampus has made that possible. Um, and we've, you know, worked to make it possible as well, saying we're going to provide all of these students access to AWS you know, sandbox accounts where they can build and they can show off what they can actually develop and we can get that um, hiring company input into what they should be building um, and how they should be solving real world problems. And so that's the model that we've kind of co-developed that's out there that is kind of fueling the economic um, ecosystem across the state. And it's a model that we want to replicate, uh, you know, with those who are interested in other states as well. So I want to take a minute to just kind of highlight the key points for those who are interested um, and how they might think about this, you know, wh wherever you all are, um, you know, when it comes to education, four-year degrees, we've relied on them. It's sort of um, almost a lazy proxy for some of the skills that um, can can be substituted in for higher ability, but they aren't necessary um, in all cases. Um, and we're seeing this shift um, that's opening the market and putting two-year degrees, certificates, micro-credentials at the center. TCSG is out there kind of leading the charge. Um, you know, while companies, and we're seeing about a third of companies today that are partnering directly with educational institutions. Um, it, there's a reality, though, that that really, you know, doing so can set you apart in terms of your access to talent and your ability to shape talent. Um, and so this collaboration between industry, government, and academia is really what can help you drive outcomes from, um, you know, a hiring company perspective. Uh, so I think, you know, across really the state, across the country, across the globe, there's this huge opportunity right now. This is the moment for companies to look at what TCSG is doing with AWS, with other, you know, industry leaders, um, and there's a chance
ways to replicate this model as you're thinking about building your own talent pipelines and giving access and opportunity to folks who will make really strong um, employees and help you drive growth. So Stephen, what would you add um, to that to just kind of <laughs> finish us up, up here? It's, it's, hard, it's hard to follow Rebecca on that one. Great, great summary. No, great session. Great to chat with you. Uh, you know, the, the, the biggest thing is form those partnerships, form them early, uh, stay in touch often, communicate often. Uh, and you're right, the, the employers who are partnering now uh, with local educational entities are, are going to win uh, because they're going to get to craft not only the programs, but also they're going to get first pick uh, of the students uh, that are available and, and they're going to they're going to win that talent war. Um, we're going to be competing for students, you know, like never before. Uh, employers are competing for employees like never before. And, and so the earlier uh, you can work uh, with those individuals, the, the better off you're, you're going to be. Um, and, and, you know, Amazon's a good example of that, right? They, they've brought to the table for us a number of initiatives. Uh, Rebecca never says no. And it's like, hey, we've got an idea on how we can connect, you know, this group of people uh, to employers. And, um, and, and, and that's working a, a lot of... Um, uh, uh, making a lot of good networking uh, inroads, uh, even when it doesn't benefit Amazon directly, uh, it's benefiting the customers of Amazon and uh, and the customers of their customers. Uh, so that that's really the magic here is uh, don't don't worry about who gets credit. Uh, don't worry about is is my company getting something out of this. Just get out there and make those connections, and and it's going to benefit the students, and ultimately it's going to come back and benefit your company as well. So thank you all very much. Thank you, Rebecca. Great chat, and thanks, uh, thanks to the tag team for having us.